Welcome to Sinful's Horror Stories. Tonight's video features true scary college experiences. Sit back, relax, stay sinful. Story number one. This story happened in early December of 2018. It was Christmas break, so I was back home from college and staying with my parents. I live on the second floor of my house, just above the sliding back door. It's a fairly heavy door, so anytime anyone opens or closes it, I can hear it. Our house was built in 1940, so it creaks a lot and sound travels through the walls fairly easily. We live in a relatively safe part of town, too. The strangest people we've ever gotten are magazine solicitors, and even they stopped coming around a few years ago. We never come anywhere close to a break-in. Admittedly, I'd gotten into a bad habit of smoking weed out of my bedroom window after my parents went to bed. Most nights by midnight I had my window open anywhere from 30 minutes to 2 hours. Depending on how tired I was, how cold it was outside, etc. I would leave it open to air out my room while I watched Netflix or listened to music. I always listened to whatever I was watching through one headphone. This way I had an open ear to hear if anyone got up or started walking in the hallway. That night, I had gone through my routine and was laying in bed watching YouTube when the alarm to our house went off. It was blaring to all hell, so the entire house was up and ready to go. My primary concern, which I realize is ridiculous, was not that someone might be breaking into our house. It was that my parents might smell the residual weed in my room. My dad poked his head through my door to make sure he knew where I was before he scoped the downstairs and turned off the alarm. When he knew I was okay, he asked me to go into his room with my mom. I don't think he noticed that my room's window was open. After he cleared the downstairs, he did a sweep of the front and backyard to make sure no one was hiding in the shadows. He's pretty paranoid about most things, but honestly, I appreciated his thoroughness. He came back up, told us that he didn't find anything. We all went to bed. I went back to my room and debated whether or not I should close my window. Stupidly, I decided not to. I figured my dad had swept the yard so it was fine. Plus my parents were awake and would probably freak out if they heard my window sliding closed. I decided to wait a bit and let them get a little less conscious before making any window related noise. About 15 minutes later, just as I was about to get up and close my window, the alarm goes off. My dad rushes downstairs to turn it off just as I slide my window close and push both locks back in place. A few minutes pass and my dad comes knocking on my door. I open it and he tells me, Hey, I think it's just the wind. Don't worry about the alarm. It had been pretty windy night, 20 to 30 miles per hour and the door had a little give in its locking mechanism, so we both decided to write it off for the time being. The next morning my dad decides to check the alarm system's app on his phone. To our horror, it showed the door being opened and closed 14 times before the alarm triggered for the first time. Like I said before, it's a heavy door. We've had windier nights and never had the alarm triggered or seen the sensor open and close 14 times. My dad was telling our next door neighbor about what had happened the night before, trying to figure out if it actually could have been the wind. Our neighbor told us that in fact he'd caught someone briefly entering his backyard on a security camera. He told us he'd probably freaked out once he saw the camera and moved on to our house. Just imagining whoever it was standing at our back door, right below my open window, triggering the alarm hiding somewhere and probably watching my dad scope out our backyard, and then doing it all again while I laid oblivious in my bed, was enough for me to stop my midnight smoke sessions entirely. After this we had a series of weird events happen at midnight. The next night a woman rang our doorbell at the stroke of midnight, literally, and gave my dad his wallet, which he hadn't realized he'd been missing. A few nights later the alarm triggered at the back door again. And then on Christmas Eve, 
I was home alone while my family was at the midnight church service, and the alarm triggered twice, back to back, in a disturbingly similar time span as it had the first night. That time I didn't bother asking which door had been triggered. I didn't want to know. I took away a fairly simple life lesson. Lock your doors. Lock your windows. Set your house alarm. Even if you think you're safe. Story number two. It was my freshman year of college and around the springtime. I enjoyed working out and after a busy day, it was time to hit the campus gym. Now to give you a visual of how the campus fitness center is pictured, the main center area has several treadmills, some hamstring sets and small televisions. This area also has windows for people outside the gym area to peer into as well. To the right of the treadmill area includes a weight and bench press station, and to the left is the entrance to the gym. I was doing my nightly routine, and the gym was very empty. After I was finished, I decided that it was time to head back to my dorm. Now this is when things started getting creepy. As I left the gym and was going up the steps, I noticed someone across campus. He seemed suspicious and I heard him say from the distance, What's up? This was a bearded, rugged looking man and he had a hood over his head. I said, What's up? Back at the man as well. At first, I didn't think much else. Maybe he wanted to be friendly. I began to walk across the grass to my dorm. However, the man started heading my way, with his eyes completely locked onto mine. I became unnerved and went back into the fitness center, rapidly. Now fortunately, there is always a fitness center worker near the entrance of the gym, who sits at a desk and has people sign in before they work out. At the moment, I didn't tell him about what had just happened, because I felt like I was possibly being paranoid. What if this guy just wanted to chat? However, during the time, I peered outside the windows of the treadmill area and saw shoes pacing back and forth. I started to panic and suspected this was the same guy as before. After this happened, I decided to stick around and watch TV in the treadmill area for at least 10 to 15 minutes, just to ensure the creepy man had left. It was obvious now that this man had no good intentions. The fitness worker at the desk asked me if everything was okay, when they noticed I seemed uneasy. I said that someone may be following me. They asked if I needed a walk back to my dorm, and I said that the guy might be gone. However, I was dead wrong. After 10 to 15 minutes it was time. With a deep breath and butterflies in my stomach, I braced myself and left the gym slowly. Stepping outside it was still and humid. What came next though, terrified me. As I crept up the gym entrance steps in the dark night, there was a bush rustling. I peeked around the corner slowly and there was a strange man leering at me with an odd expression, only a few feet away now. I was horrified. Without a second thought, I ran back into the gym with my heart in my throat, told the worker that someone was right outside the gym stalking me. Campus security was then called. However, by the time the security got there, the man was nowhere to be found. Fortunately, they walked me back to my dorm, but not before I had to file a report about what had happened. Thinking about the whole situation still unnerves me to this day. Story number three. Early into college, I took a class that required a team project. I didn't know anyone in the class or the area, so I was paired up by the professor with a guy named Frank. Frank seemed quiet and mellow like me, so I thought it would go smoothly. Before leaving class, we exchanged numbers and swapped ideas for papers that we had to write together. The project itself ran smooth. We never got together outside of class to work on it, but we completed it with Google Docs and occasional texts, and we got a great grade on the project. I think that would be the end of our acquaintanceship, but I was so wrong. 
He asked me out over text and I politely told him no, and that I was flattered but not interested. Apparently that wasn't a good enough hint because he kept texting me. He would ask me on dates or to come over to my dorm if I would tell him which one it was. At this point I was annoyed and creeped out so I stopped answering him. The next few times he texted me, Frank would compliment my outfit that day, when I had not seen him the whole day, but apparently he had seen me. I feel like I was being watched anywhere on campus I went. He would say, that green color looks good on you, or your hair is so pretty today. A couple more weeks passed and he started to get angry. He would text me asking where I was and why I didn't show up for a date, things I never agreed to. I still had not texted him back from this whole time. He'd say things like, looking forward to pizza tonight with you, or catch you at the movies at 7. I definitely should have blocked him by this point. He followed me on Instagram at the time, and I had posted a picture of my cat who had unexpectedly passed away, along with a caption talking about how much I missed him. He liked the photo, then sent me a two-word text, meow meow. I finally blocked Frank on everything, phone, social media, the whole thing. He would friend request me once from what must have been a second account, but I quickly blocked that one too. Over the next years of college, I would occasionally see him on campus. He'd keep his head down around me, but he always made me nervous after that. Creep who doesn't know what no means. Let's not meet again. Story number four. I was on Christmas break my senior year of college, and I was back home staying with my parents. This encounter is real and happened to me six years ago when I was 21. For context, I'm female. I live in New England, where the winters are very snowy, with long, cold, dark nights and short days. One such night in February, I was alone in my parents' house, which is in a safe, quiet suburban neighborhood, where the houses are within 100 feet of each other. My parents had divorced years before and were still on good terms. So when my mom decided to sell the childhood home, my dad bought it so I could live with him during my breaks from school. While in the process of moving, neither of my parents stayed at the house for a couple nights, and only my room upstairs had furniture. The rest of the house was mostly empty with boxes scattered about, and the internet had not yet been switched over. So I often sat at the far end of the living room and mooched off of our neighbor's Wi-Fi. It was fun not having my parents there for a couple of nights, so I stayed up late on my laptop and surfed the web into the early hours of the morning. During my second night of being alone, it snowed late into the evening, and I sat in the dark living room on a folding chair, with only my laptop screen for light, with snow falling quietly outside. The neighborhood was silent as cars don't usually drive by after 10 p.m., and neighbors stay inside to keep warm. At 2.30 a.m., I decided to head to bed, was wrapping up my internet activities for the night, when I heard three very slow, quiet knocks on the front door, just a few feet away. I immediately closed my laptop, knowing that the bright screen made me visible to the person outside, since the windows were not covered. I got off of my chair and walked very quietly over to the door and knelt down below a window to listen outside. Frozen with fear, I waited for what was probably two full minutes when I heard three more identical knocks. They were very slow and would have been too quiet to wake anyone up who had been sleeping. I gathered the courage to look outside through the window and saw a dark figure standing very close to the front door dressed in a black winter coat and black pants. A hood pulled over his head obscured his hair and face, and he stood still with his arms to his sides. I contemplated calling the police, but ultimately decided to continue waiting. I moved back behind the doorway from the window, and after two more minutes passed, I could see the man walking down the walkway, past the front of the house and leaving. Suddenly he stopped, turned around and looked directly at the window through which I watched him. 
Fifteen seconds passed as we stared at each other, but I couldn't see his face under the darkness of his hood. Finally, he turned around and walked down the driveway and down the street. He didn't stop at any other houses, just continued down the street in the falling snow. And I watched him for ten minutes until he faded into the darkness. As far as I know, this has not happened since then. I still live in that house and occasionally have nightmares in which the scene replays itself. Except that in the dreams, I open the door for him. Thank you guys for watching. Please be sure to leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe for future content. I hope everyone's having a good weekend so far. Make sure you enjoy the sunshine if you can. But remember, whenever you want to be sinful, you know where to find me. Until we meet again, stay sinful.